Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play more of our Aztec Aggression campaign. So, um, it's been a couple days since I played this last. We've got rebels to deal with, but at the same time, uh, it's the year 1486 and I've decided it's time to kill Spain. Um, we don't know they exist yet, but we need to prepare. So, we're going to uh, decline military access for anyone who requests it. We're going to take care of our rebels, we're going to declare war on Telepanic, and then um, we're going to full annex them, assume control probably of their two vassals, although these guys really hate me, that might be a bad idea. Yeah, I don't think we want to do that. If we do that, it'll be forever and a day until we can actually annex them. I think we're just going to have to fabricate claims on as much as possible, which we have, and then we declare, and we conquer... Conquer provinces and core them directly. Yeah, I think we're done with vassals just because of the way that uh, aggressive expansion has been built up. I have I have no method of reducing that at this point. Um, truce wise, we have a truce over here. We have a truce over here. We have a truce down here. We have a truce with uh, mixed tech. We have a truce with this guy. We have a truce with this guy. The only one we can attack is this guy, and he's going to bring in Tlaxcala, which is that guy, and we already have claim on it, so we're ready to go. So we take that province, and then any of these provinces we have claims on, and maybe even more than that. But first we deal with these, uh, these rebels. How are we doing on tech? You're on tech 4, I'm on, I'm on tech 4, you're on tech 3. Manpower, um, leaves a little bit to be desired. Timus here is, uh, what kind of a leader is he? A 1-1? One, one? Pretty crap. We have a nice war chest, though. I think I'm gonna hire some more mercenaries. At least one. Why don't we do an actual consolidate? That leaves us with room for one more. And it'll save us a little tiny bit of manpower. This is our colony up here. Now I could send and retract to increase the, the growth rate a little bit, but I don't think we need to do that. I think the main thing is just take care of these things. Also, I appreciate the comments on the previous videos. I was getting confused by that type of event. Uh, the event where, like, the province was sieged. I guess I didn't really realize that the Aztecs were, like, supposedly, like, a little bit less, more of a, more of a vassal system than it is, uh... It's the only country that's like that. So, it's just, it's weird to me. But, I get it now. Makes sense. You can stop commenting on it. I get it. Alright, so we're attacking into the hills. I don't think it really matters. Um, don't we have, uh, we're, yeah, that's right, we're just still Tech 4. I was thinking about the Mayan campaign, where I got up to, like, Tech 7, I can make cannons and everything. And we're still just plain old in infantry. 113% uh, discipline, though. It's pretty good, right? Um, and that's with the Discipline Advisor. We just consolidated away one of our guys. We'll hire another mercenary. We have plenty of money. I'm not worried about the income. Because what's going to end up happening is that probably within the next 20 years, we're not going to have any enemies. So even if we go into debt, even if I spend down this whole war chest right now, there's, there's not going to be any enemies until the colonists arrive. So we may as well just be aggressive, colonize, you know, get things going. Now, I do think I want to focus on administrative, and, and it's possible that it would have been better to go for colonization. I'm doing a simultaneous Inca campaign now, and um, rushing for exploration, I think, is the way to go after you get to Tech 2 and you have your, your uh, military advantage. I think you just need to get to Tech 2. I don't think you need to worry about Tech 4. Tech 4 is pretty good, but we had the advantage at Tech 2. First country to Tech 2 pretty much vassalizes everyone else. So. Alright, so you're on Tech 3. Tech 3, Tech 3. We have a tactics advantage. We have a 112% discipline. And it is time to take that land from them. They do have a 2-4 leader. Let's go kill that army first. Let's wait for this siege to finish. We're full maintenance. We do have another revolt possible. Um, it's going to happen. Metz, Metz Titlan. Alright. Um, this is hills, jungle. Alright, let's go up there. Let's wait for this rebellion. And then we'll declare our war. 
We gotta get all these rebels to, uh, to relax. I know I lowered autonomy, and that's why they're all causing so many problems, but... Again, there's not gonna be anyone to fight soon, so... It just makes sense to me. And then the mixed tech patriots, they're gonna rebel in... a couple places as well. Koyolapan. Okay, there's the rebellion. really a big deal. It's good being the defender. It's good knowing when they're going to attack. I suppose we could wait for some morale. So, on the wiki, um, they've updated the wiki now. Apparently, Meneth, who is the guy who like handles the wiki for pretty much every Paradox game, he's actually, he got hired by Paradox. Uh, Wiz shared the actual code with him on how leader generation works, which is really interesting. Um, I'm not really going to worry about it, because basically it still works the exact same way that it always has. If you have more army tradition, you get more pips. But it's nice knowing exactly how the formula works. There's like a dice roll involved, of course, which explains why sometimes you get really good leaders and other times you get crap leaders, even with high tradition or low tradition. But it's nice. It's nice that they're actually revealing some more of the game mechanics. I think that's really good. Okay, we have two available force limit. I think we just hire a couple more mercenaries. And we just still have one more rebellion that's at 70%, but they'll they'll probably wait a little while till they actually succeed in their rebellion. So we'll declare the war now, I think. Okay, we can't make you a co-belligerent. And we don't want to do flower wars, we're just going to do conquest. And uh, let's wait until we have full morale. So we can wait until probably April. We'll declare April 1st, I think. They're probably at full maintenance, just because I'm at full maintenance. Alright, well that's close enough. Let's go. You're going to call him in? I'm going to go smash his army since he's got a pretty good leader. I want to kill his army before he can uh, do anything. Your leader can't fight. Cannot participate in this engagement. Out of there. The 2-2. Two -two. I think we also just go kill his army now. We just, we just clean up the armies, really. And then we'll spread out one army per province. Since we're using mercenaries, I'm going to just consolidate between every engagement because... I do want to reduce the number of overall troops that we have while maintaining peak fighting efficiency. Um, he's going to shatter probably to one of his vassal's holdings. We do have one maneuver, so we can re we can recover at 60% in enemy territory. We still prefer to march through our own lands. Oh, hey, yeah, we're going to take advantage of these. 17th, 16th. Let's kill that one. Nice. And he's heading to the hills. He did not want to reinforce. That's a good sign. Oh, beautiful stack wipe. Well, eventually I'm going to have to start sieging them down, but there's so much territory that they're going to continue to train troops, so I can't really carpet siege. I think I'm pretty much just going to have to just walk around and smash their armies to pieces a, a whole long while until they have, like, no manpower. 8th, 11th. Either they're going to run out of money or they're going to run out of manpower. But we'll head back to our own territory for the moment. We'll take the prestige hit. Not too worried about that. Um, let's go ahead and let this guy get fielded on the twenty-third. So we'll we'll arrive on the twenty-third. 
Or the 24th, that's good. Oh, he cancelled it. Alright, we'll detach a single regiment up there. That actually detached two. It's not really what I had in mind to game. Okay. Um, gonna get some guys together. And we're gonna smash them again. Let's see, can we get a ticker recovery? Let's do that. We're in our own territory. We can get 10 more, uh, 100... What would it be? It'd be a hundred more men. Ten percent of a thousand. Yeah. Get all those mercenaries reinforced. Alright, and how thin can we go now? I think I'm gonna shift consolidate. We're gonna leave behind... a mercenary. And we're going to leave a trail isolating provinces on our way so that they cannot um, split the... Uh, so they can't combine, combine very well. So we'll go like here. That means they can train troops here, but they can't do much else. You know what? Actually, I think I might have enough men to just carpet siege at this point. Come to think of it. Let's try it. Oh yeah, we're totally good. I think we have more than enough. And, uh, yeah. Yep, okay. We have spares. These guys will recover. Pretty much using all mercenaries. There's a single regiment there that's not mercenaries. Let's find a, a mercenary replacement. If you go down there. Beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Do a siege value on our guy. Oh, yes, we do. Let's get him involved then. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's actually going to make it a lot easier. I thought. I didn't think we had enough men to actually siege everything down, but they only have one level fort level. Level one fort level. I can speak English. English is my first language. You may not believe me, but it's true. Okay, so how do we want to conquer this land? I mean, on the one hand, I have to just annex it. I can't. I cannot do vassalization. So it means we got all these diplo points with nothing to spend them on. I've got to get more administrative points. I wish we were switched. I wish we were like 530 would have been better. Oh well. You can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. We're going to have to start colonizing in this direction, I think. We got both merchants working. One of them's steering trade, one of them's collecting. Okay, so that makes sense, right? 64% is retaining it. Got a lot of people collecting from trade here. I think steering is the right way to go. Diplomat-wise, um, I want to discover the people up here so we can attack them. Kome's ate somebody. That's all right with me. Doesn't really bother me. Let's see, are we going to be able to fabricate a claim in the next... I, I think we need to keep the diplomat free. We're really close to ending this war. We'll keep one diplomat free, fabricate claim with the other. We have um, no rivals, I think, right now. Or do we? We do. Good. Good. 
Alright. This is not your capital, so I need that siege. Don't particularly need this siege. Well, that felt that that colony felt like it grew really fast. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. Let's go down. Um, this three base next province. We've got to colonize that. Now that we have this land over here, we can actually reach it. Look at these dyes are worth a lot. So that land is safe now. No unrest. Good autonomy. Good. Good. Rebel uprisings at 90%. When they rebel, they're going to rebel in Koyo Lapen and Koix Lahuacan. So these two. Let's put half and half in both provinces. And that was also a claim, but I'm not going to worry about sending the leader over there. All right, perfect. We have met 100%. All I'm going to wait on that rebellion. Full annexation. If we full annex, we get their vassals, but their vassals would love us. So no, we're not going to do that. We cannot separate piece. Yes, we can. We can separate piece you, but that would cost me diplo points. I think instead we just negotiate for anything that I have a claim on. Easiest way to do that will be to sort by diplo and take anything that's zero. This other land we can take for just 28, but I don't think there's any big rush. I want to I wanna just take the land we have claims on. Or do I? If we can get the claims, we can reduce our admin point cost, which will help us get to exploration a little bit quicker. So yeah, we'll just take 60%. Take your money. Take your uh, war reparations. That sounds great. It's all adjacent to us. We're good to go. All right, core all the things. Claim Yopitskinko. Yeah, we'll do that. We have no other available rivals. We've isolated a capital. We can do some more claims there now. We can claim this, this, and this. We can claim these two. Next up is probably going to be a war with Mixtech, which we already have a claim on. 90% rebellion progress means they're going to rebel, and we're going to take care of that. Meanwhile, the colony is not growing because it's tropical. Hmm. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? It's all tropical. I can't colonize here. I knew that. We could go here, three base stacks. What do you think is more important? Finding natives that we can attack, or three base attacks versus one base attacks? I'd say finding the natives is going to be more significant in the long run. Finding new neighbors to exploit. Okay. Alright, I'm going to take a break here. I look forward to... Hey, there we go. There's a rebellion. Expected that. Um, I'm going to take a break here, but I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will continue to dominate our neighbors and prepare for the attack on the new world, or the old world, actually. So thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.